Hello, my name is Thorsten Wild from Nokia Bell Labs. And today I want to give you an overview how we move towards an integrated sensing and communication system in 6G. The network will become the sensor. This does not only mean that the communication network transports sensor information, it means much more. It means that we are using RF signals of the cellular system to vastly expand our sensing capabilities. Let's recap Nokia 6G vision. The vision is that three different worlds become connected. The digital world is our world reflected in software. The physical world is consisting of hardware, of robots. The human world is the wetware, is the biological world. And um, by connecting these worlds, we can uh, leverage uh, a lot of advantages uh, uh, to have a digital twin representation of the real world for more intelligence, better control and new experience. And now the communication component of a joint communication and sensing system would be that we have the connectivity to connect those worlds in real time with extreme requirements, uh, so high reliability and extreme high data rates. And the sensing part of it would be that we are able to sense the world, to provide the context information, to create a digital map of our environment, which is a prerequisite of creating the digital twin. Now let's have a look what we already can do with 5G based on Nokia Bell Labs technology. Here you see a picture of the test factory Arena 2036 in Stuttgart, Germany. On the top left side, you see a robot driving around in this test factory, which is equipped with 5G modems. We have installed 5G in this factory and uh, multiple um, uh, 5G uh, access points, which use time difference of arrival methods and angle of arrival methods in order to determine the position of this robot just based on uh, the signals, uh, on the cellular communication signals. And while we are uh, loca localizing the user, we are also communicating over 5G. So the video is also uploaded at the same time to 5G. On the, on the right side, you see uh, the green dots, which represent the location, so the estimated location of the robot. And, um, and they are in, in, in more than 95% of the cases more accurate than 50 centimeters. And uh, this localization will help us to offer new service capabilities which are attractive for vertical industry players inside factories. But we will not stop uh, with uh, the capability of localizing. The next thing we want to do for 6G systems is the possibility to um, not only localize objects which are part of the network, but the vision for 6G is to be able to sense objects which are not even connected to the network for any type of object. So let me explain you the example principle of how the network can act as a sensor. On the left side, you see a set of base stations they are sending out signals for communication purposes in order to transport data uh, to users. But at the same time, any object uh, within the communication also causes reflections. So these base stations can pick up the reflections and process them in a way which is similar to existing radar technology. Um, and then we can not only use conventional radar processing, but all, also any kind of AIML processing in order to classify objects, detect objects, uh, localize objects, uh, estimate their properties, etc. In order to make this happen, we want really to integrate um, uh, the entire sensing functionality in existing communication systems. Communication systems are using slots um, uh, for uh, structuring the, the, the resources in time. And we can either reuse all the existing data communication, or we can also, in new uh, standards in the future, insert new sensing bursts, so new predefined symbols, which then can be used in order to scan the environment, in order to, uh, and, with, and the scanning helps them to pick up uh, the necessary reflections. These bursts should be very short in time because 
we want to have a minimum communication service interruption. So we want to still optimize the latency of the communication system. And at the same time, there should be wide in bandwidth because the wider the bandwidth is, the higher the range resolution is, which we get. And we can, in, for example, the, the, the basis of any uh, 4G or 5G communication system is the so-called OFDM technology, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. Here you have um, a resource grid in time and frequency, which is de depicted by those boxes. And these uh, so-called resource elements, we can reuse both for communications and sensing, or we can insert new dedicated resource elements for sensing. Even, for example, each cell can insert specific uh, sensing symbols um, in order, for example, to, uh, to avoid uh, interference between uh, different cells. Network as a sensor will offer us a rich set of new use cases, new features which can be integrated into cellular communication systems. This can be detection of drones in the lower airspace. It can be detection of pedestrians or robots in the factory. It can be monitoring of traffic for smart cities or for parking lots. And in order to make all of those use cases useful and make them happen, of course, there is still some research required. And this research stretches across different technology building blocks. So, for example, we need to be able to model the channel, so the propagation channel. Uh, in conventional cellular communication systems, there are channel models from statistical channel models from transmitter to receiver, which um, help to simulate the performance of communication systems. Simulation is very important because before you build a system in a large scale, thousands of base stations, you are not able to assess its performance because for prototyping, you have only a few of them. So you need to be able to simulate systems. And for joint communication and sensing, of course, there are challenges which need to be solved before we can uh, simulate it because what is new in, in these joint communication sensing signals systems is that we need uh, some deterministic description of the propagation channel. Statistical description alone will not help because there are certain geometrical properties of objects which have to be inherently um, there in the simulation. Um, this is one, one problem we have to solve. And, and then the other problem is also that um, we have not only a transmitter and a receiver, but we have a transmitter, a reflection, then we have certain reflection properties, and then uh, the channel back uh, to, the, uh, to the, the receiver again. This is one part of research challenges we have, which we have to solve. The next part is uh, that um, typically we use higher carrier frequencies for sensing. The higher the carrier frequencies, the higher is the bandwidth. The higher the, uh, we have the bandwidth, the, the better is the range resolution, so we can more accurately loc localize, um, for example, objects. But if we go to higher carrier frequencies, usually with wider bandwidth, we have more power consumptions in the analog to digital converters. This means we want to have not so many digital chains. And therefore, in those systems, typically hybrid beamforming is used. So a combination of analog beamforming plus a few digital processing chains. But this means that the beam can only look into one direction at one time. And so we need proper um, beamforming technologies how do we scan properly the environment over time in order to perfectly reconstruct the information from the environment? The next challenge we have to solve is the duplexing challenge. So if we have a, what the radar world is causing a monostatic setup, meaning the transmitter and receiver are nearby, uh, we have a self-interference problem. So um, we have not only the, the reflection coming back from an object, but we have also a spillover of signals from the transmitter to the receiver. And this self-interference problem has to be handled. Ideally, we would have a full duplex system, uh, but this is um, not necessary. We can make sure by proper smart separation of transmitter and receiver, smart digital interference cancellation, uh, plus the appropriate um, the beamforming strategies uh, that we can deal with self-interference also without full duplex. And then, of course, we need to have the proper quality of service established. Quality of service is well defined for communication systems, but we need new definitions for sensing systems. And we need to take into account the existence of quality of service, both in the communication side as well as the sensing side. 
And then there's not only the base station and, uh, and the antenna array, but there's also uh, other network elements. In, in localization for 5G, we have the so-called LMF, the localization management function. This now should be expanded. So this aggregates signals from multiple base stations in order to um, yeah, um, collect the information um, about, for example, the location of an object. Now we would need this to be expanded towards the functionality of sensing and we will need the proper protocols to connect uh, all those entities um, in an interoperable manner. And then I mentioned already that we of course also have challenges to solve in the way how we for example train AIML uh, systems. Nobody wants to hand label radar images um, and, and, and train based on this. So we need also new clever ways of um, using our artificial intelligence properly. Let me give you an example of technolo technological solutions which come from Nokia Bellabs in order to address the challenges I mentioned previously for sensing. So regarding the hybrid beamforming challenge, we have come up with a solution which we call SARA, sampling and reconstruction of angular domain. Uh, the conventional codebook uh, of um, beamforming is typically based on a uniform angular design. We have come up with a new normalized angular frequency dom domain uh, design uh, combined with a specific interpolation. And this design is very, very efficient. So we can scan the environment and uh, in the, the, depicted by the blue dots and then reconstruct the green response of an, of an object perfectly, even if we have just disc discretized uh, uh, and sampled the space in a certain manner. And this reduces the beam overhead compared to conventional uh, uniform angular design by more than 30%. And it's also very efficient in terms of computational complexity um, and um, can also uh, achieve a very good resolution of objects. A second technology example I'd like to deliver is about the way how we sense uh, and then train uh, artificial intelligence systems. So for example, neural networks uh, without uh, the need of labeling each radar reflection. So on the left side, you see, for example, the, the image of a street crossing um, where there is a car and then um, um, leftmost there is the radar uh, periodogram, so the radar image uh, of this. So it looks uh, for a human um, observer, it looks confusing and it's not easy to label where really the car is. And so um, our um, um, technology is now using uh, camera information uh, in order to um, uh, localize um, the, the object of interest um, and then um, then um, based on this localization find the bounding box in the radar image and then uh, use the cross information to train the neural network. So this is a self-labeling uh, technology which is referenced in uh, the, the reference on the left side. Let me conclude. So we can really say that network as a sensor becomes an enabler uh, for the vision of connected world. And it can already uh, be realized in 5G advanced partly, but we recommend uh, to have a design which is integrated natively into the air interface of a 6G system. And thus we think that sensing will unleash its full potential in 6G. And you have seen that we have really good progress in key network as a sensor technologies. I've given you uh, specific examples in areas like um, example AIML and beamforming. Thank you very much.